Today's video is brought to you by Drop. And a couple of months ago, Drop reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in checking out their Enter Mechanical Keyboards. And if I liked them, I agreed to do a little sponsored ad segment, which is what you're listening to now. So the Enter Mechanical Keyboard is designed to introduce people to the wider world of enthusiast mechanical keyboards. And it includes an aluminum backplate and your choice of tactile or linear switches. You can see the keyboard that I've been using now for about a month right on screen. And to be honest, I love it. It's smaller than mechanical keyboards I've had in the past, which is great because especially with Star Wars Squadrons and my HOTA setup, my desk is pretty frequently filled to the brim with stuff. But if you check out the website, you'll see that the Enter comes in a variety of colors, not just the white one that I've got here. And if you buy a keyboard on Drop, it comes with a free 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't like it, you can easily return it. Thank you so much to Drop for sponsoring today's video. There will be a link to the product, the Enter Mechanical Keyboard, down in the description. You can go check it out there, and you'll also be helping the channel out. With that being said, on with the content. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars The Mandalorian lore video. Now, we've been doing these sort of after episode breakdowns since the beginning of the season, so you probably know that there are spoilers in this video, but for anyone who doesn't, there will be spoilers for Chapter 14 of The Mandalorian and some of the stuff that came before, so if you haven't watched it yet but you decided to click on this video, go home, rethink your life, and come back later. Alright, so episode 14 had a very surprising moment for a lot of people. The arrival at the planet Tython. I was personally expecting that there would be at least one episode where the Mandalorian had to secure passage to Tython, but no, he basically showed up there at the beginning of the episode without any evidence of a real journey. We talked about this during my actual review, but I'm not going to lie, I thought this was a little bit disappointing. One of Tython's fundamental elements in Star Wars Legends was the fact that it was difficult to reach because it was in the deep core. Even Darth Bane in the Bane trilogy, had to use the totality of his powers and a state-of-the-art fighter to reach the planet whose location was kept secret by the Jedi. And Tython being in the Deep Core actually has been brought over to Star Wars canon before the Mandalorian, although not by any huge major sources. That being said, I think most people, myself included, expected Tython to remain in the Deep Core because of the technical canonization and because of the fact that Tython being in the Core was always an important aspect of the planet itself. Well, that's why the recent episode of The Mandalorian caused a bit of a stir for many people, myself included. Chapter 14 makes allusions to the fact that in canon, Tython may no longer be in the core, but it's a little bit confusing. Let's get to, I think, the piece of evidence that most people noticed. When Boba Fett in Slave 1 is chasing down Moff Gideon's dark troopers and he spots the light cruiser, he's surprised by the fact that the Empire has returned. And Fennec Shand says that can't be. The Outer Rim is under the jurisdiction of the New Republic. And when I listened to that for the first time, I was pretty confused because it seems to say, well, how can the Empire be here? The Outer Rim, where this planet is, is under the jurisdiction of the New Republic. Now, besides the fact that that's kind of a weird thing for the characters to say, considering this entire show has been about the fact that the New Republic does not really have control over the Outer Rim, and they just killed like 30 stormtroopers each, it does seem to counter the idea that Tython is in the Deep Core. Now it's in the Outer Rim, apparently. But it's not really so clear. There's also another hint to this quote-unquote controversy. It's really not a big deal either way. But at the beginning of the episode, if we take a look at the Razor Crest's have a computer, and by the way, I'm happy the Razor Crest is gone, that ship is god ugly awful. We can see that there's two dots, and the most, I think, eye-catching one is the blinking red one, which is at the edge of whatever this map is representing, which I initially took to be the galaxy. But let's look at things a bit more closely, and we'll start with the map, since that's what I just explained. First of all, as is obvious, if you take a closer look, there are actually two indicators on the map. There's a blinking red light, which I took to be the destination, but could also be, I think, more likely the Razor Crest itself. Then and there's also a second thing which could be a nav point. So maybe this map is actually indicating that Tython is more towards the center of whatever's being displayed here. And the whatever's being displayed here, I say as I make air quotes that you guys can't see, 
is also a key factor. We've all assumed that this is showing the galaxy, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you really think about it. I mean, would you actually display a map of the entire galaxy if you're navigating to a planet outside of hyperspace? Probably not. Unfortunately, I don't think we can read any of the Orabesh here or anything like that, but it's more likely in my opinion that this is actually showing a sector. But as I was re-watching this episode on my larger TV just to get ready for this video, I actually spotted something else. I don't know if this has been brought up elsewhere, but the episode actually answers this question for us. Not when they're in space. When they're in atmosphere, the Mandalorian takes a brief look at his console, and we can actually see a screen loaded with Orabesh. Now, I'm not going to bother to read all of it but and I can only see this on my TV this image won't really do it justice Disney Plus on your computer might be able to show you it says Tython in the first bracket up there then in the second it says D core slash what I assume are coordinate points L and then punctuation I'm not sure how to translate so yeah this points out that Tython is in fact in the D core the deep core in other words I haven't bothered trying to translate the rest I assume it's just more details about the planet maybe it's atmosphere content or whatever else. I hope someone takes a look at that. Again, the image I posted probably won't be sufficient just because so much quality is lost in the screenshot, but yeah. So how do we explain Fennec Shand? Well, if we rewatch the scene with this knowledge in mind, I think we can very easily attribute some meaning to what she's saying other than the fact that they are in the deep core. It's pretty clear that Shand means the Empire shouldn't be around generally, not just in this system, because the New Republic would have pushed them out everywhere. Now, this is probably a bit of ignorance from Fennec Shand, because the Empire hasn't had every one of their ships destroyed, certainly not every Architens class cruiser, there are still warlords left at this point, there are still Imperial sympathizers. But what she's saying essentially is you can swap that line for that can't be the war is over or that can't be the Empire has been defeated. All in all, I still don't really like the inclusion of that. It's problematic from a few reasons, but it's easy enough to ignore. So yeah, don't worry, Tython still is in the deep core for what it matters. I mean, we didn't get that payoff that I was expecting, regardless of whether the continuity stands or not. But yeah, I hope you guys found this video interesting. I will just note now, because I think it's a good time to talk about this, that I did get a little bit of pushback, just a little bit, for last video because I was more critical of the episode than some of you were, and frankly, I think that's not a great response on behalf of the people who won't allow me to be critical of something because it's Star Wars. I said the episode is controversial, and in the circles that I've been in, there have been lots of people who weren't super warm on the episode, which is okay. Just because you and your friends or you like the episode doesn't mean that everyone did or everyone should have. Personally, I wasn't even that critical critical of it. I said it wasn't my favorite of the show, probably bottom five, but I still quite enjoyed it and I pretty much always enjoy The Mandalorian more on repeat viewings. But I also had a bunch of people come at me on Twitter and say, oh, nothing pleases you people, whatever that means, as if I haven't been overwhelmingly positive about the show in the past. So, I don't know, I guess, I know The Mandalorian is something that Star Wars fans are really holding on to right now and appreciating, which, you know what, more power to you, but don't do that to the point where you can't accept criticism of a thing, because it's just media, there's no need for that, it's good that we're talking about things critically and how could they can be improved, that's how you can help distinguish real media as well from just, you know, schlock. But yeah, that's all for me, guys. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments. Hopefully this helps to settle the Tython debate, which has been raging in the very nerdy circles that I am a part of for some time now. Until next time, though, guys, have a good one, be safe, and may the Force be with you.